Hello everyone, I am Zach from Focus Travel. Today in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips that will make your experience a lot smoother when you come to Japan. Let's begin. Tip number one, carry yen. It's very vitally important to carry yen here in Japan. Many of the ATMs, the automatic teller machines, do not accept foreign credit cards. And so you could end up in a bind if you don't have the, the right ATM machine. So some of the ATMs that accept foreign credit cards include Lawson's, 7-Eleven, Family Mart, you have even uh, post offices, and then you have Mizzou Bank. The trick about the post offices is they're not open always 24-7. Check the hours if you decide to withdraw money from a post office. The convenience stores, which are called convenies, they, uh, for the most part, they accept uh, credit cards. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're when you're traveling to Japan. Additionally, you might be able to find uh, Aeon Malls. Aeon Malls are very popular here in Japan and sometimes they have ATM machines as well. If you decide to use a foreign credit card and these uh, convenience stores, wherever you go, accepts them, keep in mind that not all of the ATMs have English options but many of them do. Went to the north part of Japan uh, when I first got here and I was uh, visiting a, uh, a site and come to find out the ATM that I went to, it did not have an English option whatsoever. So I struggled with drawing money given the fact that I knew very little Japanese at the time, but I was able to do it. Also keep in mind when you go to north of like Tokyo, for example, uh, those ATM machines are very difficult to find, especially in the rural areas, and I learned that the hard way. Okay, so if you decide to use foreign credit cards, make sure that you verify with your bank that the credit cards can even be used in the country of Japan. Also memorize your four-digit uh, number uh, because that will be uh, requested when you insert the uh, card into the automatic teller machine. You may be looking for ATMs in Tokyo. You find difficulty finding ATMs. So what do you do? What kind of advice can I give you? Well, technology has uh, been very great to us over the years, and there have been a lot of phone apps that have come out, and one of them is the Japan ATM navigation. And it will basically show you uh, where all the ATMs are. Tip number two, go to convenies. So convenies are a katakana use for convenience stores. And I have lived on convenience stores for two years. I have been to 7-Eleven, Family Mart, New Days, all the convenience stores that have been in my area. Each one of them are very unique. When you think of convenience store in the United States, you're thinking of these mundane foods, they're not fresh people don't want to be there. There's definitely not a lot of good customer service at the convenience stores in the United States. Japan, on the other hand, has a different view. They treat customer satisfaction at a very high level and that is what I love about Japan is that you feel very, very welcome. And every day I go to 7-Eleven for instance and I look for those new foods and when you try the mouth-watering Nikimons, those are very famous here in Japan. They're uh, similar to shopai. Shopai is uh, basically a steam bun uh, with meat in it, but Japanese call them Nikimons. And there's all kinds, you can find pork, even a uh, spicy taco I tried the other day, amazing. 
and they have all kinds of ramen and these ramen are excellent it's like you just went to a restaurant so i've been amazed by the food so when you come to japan definitely try the foods from the convenience stores and i cannot forget the oishi ice cream the ice cream is just phenomenal especially the matcha or the green tea ice cream if you're a coffee fan like me you must try the convenience stores boss coffee it is literally the best bottled coffee i've ever tried in this world it is phenomenal and that is one uh, thing i look forward to in the mornings is getting some boss coffee not only do these convenience stores here in japan have fresh food fresh seafood amazing coffee amazing ice cream but also the convenience stores are very clean they're very tidy and people take care of the convenience stores now other advantages of this convenience store is you can make copies you can buy tickets you can read magazines there you can do all kinds of stuff package delivery stuff like it's just an amazing uh, place the word convenience store it really rings true when you come to japan tip number three download travel apps i said earlier that i would recommend the japan atm uh, navigation uh, app it's uh, perfect for looking for ATMs at seven banks uh, but there's a lot of varieties of travel apps out there I would recommend Hyperdia uh, that that has been a very great app when you are uh, trying to find that train to get to a certain destination I've also used uh, Google Maps Google Maps is perfect it'll tell you the time that the train will arrive so will Hyperdia uh, those are the two main uh, travel apps I would uh, highly recommend uh, when you come to Japan. There's other maps like Maps With Me. Now when it comes to like translation apps, which I would highly recommend that you download, Google Translate uh, is good to um, get by if you want to translate a word. Uh, there's even options in the Google Translate where you can take a picture of something in kanji, for example, and it will translate it. Um, automatically and it is difficult uh, but you just have to be very patient with it another translator app I'd recommend is Imawa uh, very popular translator app and uh, pretty pretty good and the other Japanese uh, translation apps I'd recommend is uh, Japanese learning Japanese by Bravolo um, a host of um, language apps out there if you wanted to spend money, I would recommend um, purchasing Rosetta Stone or Transparent Language. I've learned a lot of Japanese through Transparent Language. I believe that it's a perfect app in the sense that it's very uh, conversational. And I think that's very helpful when it comes to learning the language uh, here in Japan. Another language uh, app I'd recommend is Yamiwa. It's uh, very popular as well. Now, that leads me to food. Some of the food apps I would recommend is the Guru uh, Food Navigation Guide. It's uh, very helpful in terms of like finding uh, particular restaurants. I would recommend also Tabilog. Uh, I believe for the most part it's in Japanese, uh, but you can see uh, the restaurants and pictures and uh, things like that. And I've used uh, TripAdvisor a lot when I'm looking for particular foods. I would highly recommend uh, TripAdvisor. Um, there's ratings on uh, this particular site in terms of the best restaurants, what people believe uh, is better than others. And so those are some of the apps that I would uh, recommend. And uh, you can go on the website and find these. And so they're very helpful. You can even type in a restaurant in Google Maps and it's going to pull it right up and there's reviews so there's a there's a ton of like restaurant apps out there the ones that i use in particular are google maps i use guru uh, navigation and then i also use uh, TripAdvisor. with this uh, tip of uh, downloading travel apps and food apps and all of that japan uses um, a particular currency and it's called yen 
Um, so 102 yen is equivalent to one US dollar. So there's an app called XC Currency, and I use that a lot when I'm trying to uh, convert my US dollars into, um, into yen. Now, if you're watching this video and you have no clue what yen is, you've never seen yen, you've never been in Japan, I'm gonna show you some yen. So this right here is uh, one yen, and it is equivalent to like one cent. And then I have uh, 100 yen, which is about, uh, it's less than a dollar. <clears throat> and then I have 50 yen, uh, that's about less than 50 cents. And then I have 10 yen, and that's less than 10 cents. And then I have 500 yen, and this is less than $5. Now I'm gonna show you uh, dollars. Uh, this is the, the paper money that they use. This is 1,000 yen, which is less than uh, $10. And it's very unique. Um, on the back, you have the famous uh, Mount Fuji. It's specific to uh, Japan. and. Uh, there's others, there's 5,000 yen, there's uh, 10,000 yen. And so that's some of the money. Now that you're familiar with what money uh, we use here in Japan, uh, hopefully this will help you. Tip number four, purchase a Suica card. So this is a uh, prepaid rechargeable uh, travel card that you can use um, at all the metros, the subways, um, and this is something you definitely want to purchase instead of buying tickets every time when you're getting on that train. Um, you can not only use this to access uh, the train stations, but you can also use this to um, access coin lockers, even you can even buy foods um, in vending machines. So this is a very, very helpful uh, card. I would recommend that you purchase um, when you come to Japan. This is a must and it'll save you from all the tickets um, that you'll have to buy to get on the train back and forth. It's a hassle. But with this right here, you load it up and then you, you go to the train stations without any hassle. Okay, so you wanna buy a new Suica card. How do you do it? There's two ways. One way is you can go up to the uh, cashier in the convenience store uh, next to the train station and request for a Suica card. That's how I did it. Another way is to actually uh, purchase one through the uh, machines. And the way you do it is you click on new Suica card and it'll prompt you for your date of birth, your gender, and your telephone number. So you put all that in and then you click new Suica card, you insert 2,000 yen inside this machine, which is required for a new Suica card. <laughs> and then it'll come out. Once you receive that, then you'll go up to one of the uh, card readers uh, at the train station. You'll just scan it, you'll hear a beep, and you'll see the balance remaining uh, on that card reader. You'll have an attendant to the right of you uh, who will gladly assist you if you have any issues. Um, and these uh, attendants have been very helpful to me um, in terms of navigating Japan. Tip number five, do not eat and drink when you walk. Okay, this is not okay. Um, the reason why you can, it's not good to drink um, while you're walking or eating while you're walking is simply because it's viewed as impolite. That's just one uh, taboo I would recommend that you avoid when you come here uh, in Japan. In the United States, it's fine. You walk around, you eat, you drink, and it, it's a normal thing. But here in Japan, it's very different. So keep that in mind when you come to Japan.
Okay, tip number six, carry your trash. One of the culture shops you may experience is the lack of trash cans. So while living in Japan, I've actually trained myself to ask, where are the trash bins? Uh, let's say you, you, you have trash with you and you wanna throw it away. How do you ask, where is the trash bin in Japanese? So it's gonna be, gomi doko desu ka? So gomi is trash bin in Japanese. Doko desu ka is where. Where is the trash bin? Usually you'll have a Japanese person that will point in a direction or um, may uh, take it with for you. Um, so I've had it happen both ways. Now, if you purchase food on the streets, more than likely they're gonna have trash bins uh, either behind the, the vendor areas or next to them. Uh, I usually don't have a problem um, when I'm purchasing food. I find a trash bin just right there. Uh, but it's when you're out in the city and you're, you just got something from a convenience store and you're looking around and you can't find a trash bin, that's when you pretty much have to hold your trash. Now, where can you find trash bins? You can find trash bins at the uh, train stations, at the airports, uh, convenience stores. You can even find trash bins uh, next to the vending machines. Now, despite the fact that there's a lack of trash bins here in Japan, you may ask the question, why is Japan so clean? Well, the main reason is the Japanese people are very disciplined. They carry their trash and when they find a trash bin, they put it in the trash bin. Unlike America, they'll throw their trash on the ground and that is uh, a very bad manner. Okay, so you may ask the question, why are there very few trash bins here in Japan? Well, the answer lies with the history. And on March 20th, 1995, uh, Japan was sadly um, attacked uh, by a terrorist group and a cult actually and there were 5,000 people injured on the train from a sarin uh, gas which is odorless is scentless um, and that affected a lot of people well as a result Japan started removing trash bins uh, to avoid from any suspicious items going into the bins Tip number seven, learn basic Japanese phrases. I cannot stress that enough. Um, even though Japan, in particular Tokyo, which is the largest city in Japan, it's very influenced by pop culture, um, there's still places in Japan in which people do not know English. Um, so it's a struggle, especially when you go up north and you see um, very few English signs and when you start talking to people you find that they don't know English. Um, so best, it's very important to know uh, basic Japanese or greetings. So good morning. Ohio gozaimasu. Good afternoon. Konnichiwa. And konnichiwa can actually be uh, used for hello as well. Um, good evening. Konbanwa. So that's good evening in Japanese. If you want to say, how are you? Um, it would be, o genki desu ka? That means, how are you? Okay, so if you want to respond, I am fine, then you would just say, genki desu. You just take the ka off. Ka is representing a question. Genki desu ka? How are you? I'm fine. Genki desu. Uh, to say thank you, you would say, arigato gozaimasu. Um, and then if you want to say you're welcome, you do a tastamaste. So those are some basic phrases um, that I hope will help you um, in your travel here in Japan. You want to ask like where is something, like if you're looking for a convenience store or if you have your, your Google map out on your phone and you're like, I don't know where this is, I can't find it, you can go up to someone and ask, Kore, which means this, doko desu ka? Uh, where is this? And you can point. And uh, usually people are very helpful. Um, now you may run into them, uh, and you may run into a Japanese person who has no English and he just starts speaking Japanese fluently, um, which has happened to me many, many, many times.
Tip number eight, go to a 100 yen store. Now these are unlike the dollar stores that you're gonna find in the United States. These stores are superb. And you could probably rank them in the same way as uh, convenience stores in the sense that they're very clean, they're very tidy. You're gonna find top-notch stuff. The same is true at these 100 yen stores. Yes, they're 100 yen, but you're gonna find some really nice stuff. I found my silverware there, and it's, it's nice silverware. Like, there's uh, bowls and plates. I've purchased all of those at the 100 yen store. Uh, hangers, um, there's all kinds of food that you can uh, buy, there's drinks, there's, uh, there's even like ramen bowls, and we're talking very, very delicious ramen. Um, and additionally, there's even electronics at these 100 yen stores uh, where you can, um, you can buy like I iPhone uh, covers, you can find uh, like the, the ear pieces, the earbuds. So I would highly recommend the 100 yen stores. Uh, there's something called here in Japan, it's called Don Quixote, and it's just a huge uh, store. Now, it's a little different from the 100 yen stores, but you will find all kinds of stuff at these uh, Don Quixote's. And the reason I mentioned Don Quixote is this is something uh, I sort of tied this in with my uh, tip number eight uh, because Don Quixote's are where you're going to find a bunch of souvenirs like the shirts and the keychains. Um, you're you're going to find all kinds of cool foods, especially like the matcha Kit Kats and the, um, the different varieties of Kit Kats. Um, you're gonna find just all kinds of stuff there. So when you come out of Japan, definitely go to the 100 yen store and definitely go to the Don Quixote here in Japan. There's a bunch of Don Quixote spread out um, all over uh, Tokyo. Okay, tip number nine, bring hand sanitizer. Now I say that because some of the, um, the restrooms that you go to, um, they do not have uh, soap. Uh, now, that's not true for these uh, big malls that you go to. Usually the, the restrooms have soap, um, so I usually don't have any issue with that. But if I am um, in a particular area, let's say a park for example, and I find a restroom, sometimes there's no soap whatsoever. So I carry this all the time. Additionally, when you go to a restaurant, you will be given a oshibori, uh, which is basically a wet uh, towel that's used to you know, wipe your hands. Uh, but this right here, 199% kills germs, perfect. Um, this is something you must have when you come to Japan. Now, renting a pocket Wi-Fi might be worthwhile for you um, to avoid any hassle of getting internet connection here in Japan. One of the reasons being is Wi-Fi is very difficult to find, unfortunately. Now, of course, if you go to the malls or if you go to Starbucks, you'll be able to access the Wi-Fi. The same is true for the airports. Um, but in all reality, um, Wi-Fi is very difficult to find um, here in Japan. Japan. Now, one of the reasons I would recommend the pocket Wi-Fi is you can avoid uh, buying uh, a SIM card and incurring roaming charges on a phone. Um, you can just have that pocket Wi-Fi. So, the pocket Wi-Fi I would recommend is the Ninja Wi-Fi router. Now, the question is, where can I buy the Wi-Fi? Well, you have two options. One, you can um, pre-order a Wi-Fi uh, pocket Wi-Fi before you leave Japan. The second option is to rent a pocket Wi-Fi at uh, one of the airports like Narita or Haneda. The downside with that is when you go there they may be out of stock. Um, so my suggestion is that you rent one before you come to Japan. Okay so you may ask how do I purchase this pocket Wi-Fi on the internet? So you'll visit Japan's official eConnect website, and once you're there, you'll see an image of a pocket Wi-Fi. You'll click on that, it'll bring you to the rental page. You'll be given six options. I would recommend the four gigabyte plan. 
Once you're done with that, then it'll ask for you to input your travel dates and the location of where you want the Wi-Fi to be sent to. Okay, so your pocket Wi-Fi could be delivered to your hotel, it could be picked up at the airport, it could be delivered to a particular residence, it can even be uh, delivered at the post office. I'll sum up the tips. Number one, carry extra yen. Number two, go to Convenies. Number three, download travel apps. Number four, purchase a Suica card. Okay, number five, don't uh, walk and eat at the same time. Number six, carry your trash. Okay, number seven, learn basic Japanese phrases. Number eight, go to a 100 yen store. Number nine, carry hand sanitizer with you. And number 10, rent a pocket Wi-Fi. Well, those are the 10 tips I would recommend before you come to Japan. I hope that this will facilitate your journey and I hope you have a great time here in this wonderful, wonderful country. It is uh, a country that I would spend the rest of my life in uh, if I had the opportunity to. If you have been to Japan and I didn't mention one of the tips, please comment in the section below. I would love to hear extra tips. There, there's a lot more tips I could have uh, offered before you. I wanted to condense all of the tips uh, into 10. I actually have about 30 or 40 tips I would recommend, uh, but I just wanted to do the top 10 uh, travel tips in this video. Please subscribe to my channel uh, for more uh, travel videos. I not only focus on Japan, uh, but I focus on the Philippines. I've been to Thailand um, and other places. Well, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, go and hit that subscribe button for more travel videos here on Focus Travel. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.